Don't forget your name. You're Norma Jennings. Um, here's this prom tween, a queen who's, uh, you know, washed ashore, wrapped in a plastic bag. The log is what? Well, that's actually a stunt log. The, uh, the, the real log, which, who, which, who belongs to the log lady, which she won't part with, is still back in Los Angeles. I'm glad you called. Go ahead. The cast of Twin Peaks is with us. Are you there? Hi. Yes, um, I was wondering whatever happened to the girl who was tortured along with Laura Palmer. Still in the hospital. Yeah, we're making a decision. Ronette Pulaski. Yes, she had to concentrate too. She had a brain injury, yes. Yes, uh, I wanted to know how difficult it was to get the network to go for a show like this. Uh, surprisingly not difficult. Uh, a fellow named Tony Krantz, who was David and my mutual agent in television, kept hammering at us to do the show. He took us over to ABC. And we had one meeting, and the next thing we knew, we were writing this thing, and then the next thing we knew, we were making it, and the next thing we knew, it was a series. So it's been remarkably easy. Yes. And okay, we missed the episode where Laura's father put himself over, over her casket when yeah, he yeah. died. Right. Was there any incest in that between the... Well, not when he was on the casket, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, that's good. Uh, yeah, no, that... Uh, it's a possibility, I suppose, yeah. Yeah, um, maybe. The town about which we've spoken a moment ago is Snoqualmie. Yeah. Snoqualmie, Washington. Right. Uh huh. You mention my name in Snoqualmie, and you'll get a blank stare. Here, here is the here is the town uh, on which it is believed the Twin Peaks story is based, and the town has never had s so much press, and they may or may not be grateful for it. This is from Entertainment Tonight. Watch this. Twin Peaks Mania. The misty meadows and eerie quiet of Snoqualmie, a tiny logging town in Washington, kind of gives you the creeps. There's a sort of evil out there. Something very, very strange in these old woods. The town is the setting for the fictional Twin Peaks, the TV series about small town treachery. But now, an article in The Star claimed that Snoqualmie is hiding some very dark secrets of its own. The town's respected citizens reply, Seems like a lot of things happen around this little town. <laughs> The tabloid claims serial sex murderer Ted Bundy stacked piles of human heads along the local highway. A lot of people like to point it out and say, oh, you know, we didn't know that Ted Bundy lived in Snoqualmie. You know, we didn't know that either. We still don't know that. The article claims gruesome evidence has been uncovered of satanic rituals and mutilated animals. Certainly a very colorful article and not quite uh, in tune with what we really think goes on around here. What does really go on? Worse than animal sacrifices? Well, we looked deeper. Would you believe barroom brawling with chainsaws? Well, at least the locals have a sense of humor about the chainsaw duels. And over at Big Ed's, home of the Twin Peaks Burger, a whole star article was just a hoot. This lady thinks she maybe left her chainsaw here last night. Um, what color was it? Most of the town folk like watching Twin Peaks. Hey, where's Twin Peaks? They say the show is just escapist fun that's set in their backyard. And for the most part, the dark side doesn't bother them. But the star article, they say, is pure fantasy. That's not our town. It's not. We're so mellow, it's pathetic. I'm glad you waited. Go ahead. Hang on. Hang on one second. Go ahead. Are you there, caller? Yes, I am. Go ahead. My question is uh, for the cast and for Mark Frost. The show's pretty risque, and I wondered if you had any problems with uh, censorship from the network. Uh, no, not at all. I mean, if you're box clever um, and are not explicit uh, you can get away with literally murder on, on television and i think we've done that and a little bit more yeah i thought they were going to actually have problems with me <laughs> because you're such a yeah yeah just didn't do any question you know when you come to the donahue show you never know what's going to be on I tell you. and uh I'm somewhere wearing... up there is laura palmer's murder That's right. <laughs> um i happen to have this shirt on anyway but you don't need the marketing but it would be a great twin peak shirt you yes it would <laughs> she's yeah. i'm sure you there will be one it yes. On it, though. I yes. Think, yeah. I thought when they did the scene where you supposedly uh, beat your wife, they did it very well because you heard the they went away from it. You heard the screaming, but you didn't actually see the violence, which well, I thought was in very good. That's taste. what I mean about being implicit. I mean, we don't need to see things like that. We we know they're going on. So. Well, it's implied, Sir. it's worse. Yeah. <laughs> Will we find out what kind of a chewing gum Agent Cooper chews? 
Yeah. Uh, geez. That was my question. Yeah. <laughs> to think about that one. Yes. What gave you the idea for the show? Um, well, we had this opportunity to do a TV show, and we thought we should do a mystery story set in a small town with a lot of mood and atmosphere, and before we knew it, you know, we had Twin Peaks. Do you think there could ever be a movie about this? Movie, big screen. Uh, maybe. There was, a, there was a Dallas movie years ago, I know, that did about 50 cents at the box office. So. <laughs> yes. Uh, to heck with Laura. Are we ever going to find out who killed the deer? <laughs> <laughs> Everybody, yeah, they all killed deer with chainsaws up there, apparently. Yeah. I was wondering where uh, have I seen Macon before? Did she do a L'Oreal commercial or something? Have you been, she, he wants to know if you've done any commercial work. I've done commercial work. I've done a Sprite commercial in Maxima, and it was on uh, the Baywatch two-hour movie. Huh. Uh, <laughs> well, he has it? seen you before, then. Yes. Yes, ma'am. This show reminds me of the old Peyton Place. Was it taken from that? It's funny. We went in and met with ABC, and they said, uh, we told them what we wanted to do, and they said, oh, yeah, you mean Peyton Place for the 90s. And we said, uh, yeah, that's what you want to call it. So, yeah. Phil, I'm not really a big soap fan, but I've often wondered watching these things, if somebody actually sits down in advance and thinks where they're going to go, do they know where they're going to go or does it just them? develop? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but obviously you do. You make this up as you go along. I, I assume you find out which characters get the most mail. You might. I'm sure you're all getting mail. Sure. Bags huh. of it. Really? Yeah. Well, Twin Peaks, uh, the mystery attendant to its uh, survival has been solved by Mr. Uh, Frost, who steps forward to say that, yes, you are picked up for next year, and I think they're going to run it on Saturdays. Saturday That's nights it. at 10. Saturdays at 10, and we'll be back in a moment. Wow. Transcript of today's show, send $3 to Donahue Transcript, 267 Broadway, New York, New York, 1007, or call 212-227-READ. Uh, Peggy Piper, Dana Machen, uh, Eric, Cheryl, and uh, Mark, we thank you for letting us have a peek at what we believe is going to become a very, already making its way to the center of our popular culture. We have free glazed donuts. Do I understand this? For everybody in the audience, compliments of uh, those of you who watch Tim Twin Peaks know why. Um, let me just get this call on here. Are you there, caller? Service is provided and promotional fees paid by the front. Advanced Formula Centrum, a high-potency...